can't understand it. I certainly can't understand it. But it happened. So look, I'm talking to the girl, you know what I mean? So whatever, one thing led to her. So I asked her, you know, I asked her if she'd go out with me, whatever. And she said, yes, you understand. I mean, and we started going out. Of course, nobody could believe it, like all the guys in school. Oh, no. What's going, the world is going crazy. She's going out with no Oh, no. Oh, no. Can't, can't be. Can't be. But it was. And so <laughs> the whole high school, we went out with each other. And then I went to the University of Michigan. And for some crazy reason, a year later, Linda Valenci followed me to Ann Arbor, Michigan. And after my second year and her first year at college, University of Michigan, we got married! Ah! I mean, I mean explain it. And they lived happily ever after. Thank you very much. No! That's not, that's not it. That is not the end of the story. Because life ain't so simple. Our rabbis tell us, Ish and Isha. Ish has a Yud, Isha has a Hey. Yud and Hey together stand for Hashem. You've heard this, Gemara. It's a Gemara. What's it mean? What's it tell us? That if you want to understand what an ideal marriage should be, Ish, Isha, and Hashem. Three, three, three. In other words, marriage is not a simple relationship. It's the most it's very complicated relationship. You need help. You need help to make it work. Ish, Isha, and Hashem. If you have Hashem in your marriage, you have a chance. You have a chance. You take the Yud out of Ish, you take the He out of Isha, and you get what? Ish, Ish, fire. You take Hashem out of the home. Fire is fire. What does it mean? So we know what it means because we experienced it. No Hashem in the marriage. There's a fire. What is it? Uh, what's a fire mean? An argument of leads to one thing to another, and a little fire starts burning, and you don't have a shem there to help you put it out, and the fire spreads and spreads and spreads. You can't put it out because you don't have a shem. That's what happened with us. We've been married a few years, two, or three and a half years. There came a certain night. Like the fire is totally out of control. I woke up in the middle of the night, 2 a.m. I'll tell you the exact day. Monday, January 10th, 1966, 2 a.m. If, you if you're ever in Ann Arbor, Michigan, you want to visit the spot, they, they should have one of those historical signs there. 606 East Ann Street, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48104. I knew you wanted the zip code. And, 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 and I woke up at 2 a.m. and I'm crying, it's all over, all life is, my whole life is blowing up. Our whole life is blowing up. I, I was in graduate school, <coughs> I couldn't do my homework, I, 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 my homework, my schoolwork, my studies, I, 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 my whole, I couldn't think. I tried everything and, and thank you so much. Appreciate it, really. In fact, L'chaim. <laughs> And I'm crying, it's all over, finished, finished. Then I get this crazy thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. Could that, no, 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 Empire. no, 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 maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I was so desperate, like, wait a minute. I, I imagine my life. Like this long corridor, there were hundreds of doors off the corridor. I'd opened every door, every door led nowhere. Everything I ever tried, th nothing works. Then I get this crazy thought, wait a minute, maybe, could there be a God? Wow, God, what are you talking about, God? That's crazy. Like, I should believe in God. I mean, if you were a monk in the Middle Ages and you knew nothing, it's okay, you believe in God. I mean, you uh -huh. lived in ignorance. But me, I'm this sophisticated, brilliant student in in, 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 you know, the 20th century, like, I should believe in God, like, where's God, where's God? I mean, that's ridiculous. Then it 
began to realize, if your life is falling apart, you need God, you need God, God, help me if you're there, get me out of this, help me. Whoa, maybe, maybe it's real, maybe God is real. Maybe that's the one door I never opened my life. Wow, wow, maybe God is real. The first time in my life I began to have hope, maybe God is real. Wow. I can see it. Maybe there's hope. Maybe there's a way out of this. Okay. I can believe in God. But, but I'm, uh, okay, I believe in God, but I'm not Jewish. I mean, no way. I am not Jewish. And, 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 and besides that, I know the Jews do not believe in God. I mean, I have a proof. I went to my friend's bar mitzvah, and there was this guy there, and my friend got bar mitzvah. So he's up there, blah, 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 but he's saying all this stuff. He has no clue what he's saying. And nobody in the room has a clue what he's saying. And then we all had this great roast beef. And when then, 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 then we gave the guy this beautiful check, and he opened a beautiful bank account. Oh, so Jews believe in roast beef. Jews believe in bank accounts. And no God, no Jews don't believe in God. So who believes in God as a role model? Oh, Mahatma Gandhi, oh yeah, that's a holy man. Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, oh yeah, that's a, whole, that's a role model. That's a holy man. So I started getting into Hinduism and Buddhism. And I got very deep into Buddhism. We had a professor from India. I studied with him. And I bought these... Uh, esoteric Buddhist uh, dream books and I would wake myself up in the middle of the night every night and try to remember all my dreams because I thought very hard to remember your dreams. Try it sometime. Every detail, you can't, they, they just fly away in general unless you have an amazing dream. But I thought if I could remember all the details of my dream, I'm going to find, you know, Hashem, I didn't, not Hashem, God, you know, what, whatever the Buddhist name is. See, three years this went on. Three years? <coughs> After three years, I'm like, wait a minute. Three years I've been doing this, and like, nothing happened to me. I'm the same I was three years ago. It's not working. And besides that, what's the dream in Buddhism? What's the ultimate? You're sitting at a mountaintop. You're trying to achieve this perfect mental clarity. And, uh, I don't want to sit on a mountaintop. Like, no way. I'm a human being. I'm married. I eat. I sleep. I walk. I talk. Forget mountaintop. I don't want to sit. I want to have a normal life. By this time, we were in Oxford, England. I was studying English language and literature at Balliol College, Oxford. My wife was studying art at the Eshmole Museum. And we used to travel around Europe. And we went to Rome, Paris, London, the Vatican, cathedrals, frescoes, churches. Ah! You idiot! So obvious Christianity, that's it. I mean, like, where were you? That's it. So I got into Christianity and um, started studying the early church fathers, St. This and St. That. And I wrote a book. I wrote a book which... I mean, I have to say in my deep modesty and humility, is one of the most brilliant books in the history of the world. I mean, I'm just telling you to. The name of the book was, was, Why the Christians are right and the Jews are wrong. Oh, I mean, brilliant. Okay, I didn't know anything about being Jewish. I didn't know anything about being Christian. But I mean, you don't have to know anything to write a book. I mean, as you can tell when you read my book. And, 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 and so, <coughs> there was one problem. I mean, with this incredibly brilliant book. And the problem was, nobody wanted to publish it. Like, God, what are you doing to me? Nobody wants to publish my beautiful book. I mean, so brilliant. Oh, now I look back. Baruch Hashem, thank God, nobody published this garbage. Every word is garbage. Not one word makes sense. And by the way, I have one copy of this book at, in my home. Rebetzin Young Rice, who just passed away two weeks ago, told me, Yisrael, 
keep one copy of this book because someday you're going to say you never wrote it. I mean, I would write a book like that. I'm a, you know, very holy Jew, and, you know, and I would never you know, write a book like that. So just remember where you were, where you keep one copy of this garbage that you wrote. So I have in my files, if you're ever in Lawrence, New York, and you want to see it, you can see it. It's a waste of your time, but you can see it. It's there. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I, I wrote this book. It's not published. We got to do something with our life. We left England. We came back to America. We settled in a small town about 60 miles north of New York City on the Hudson River, Cornwall on Hudson. And what am I going to do? There was a there was a weekly newspaper that came out once a week in this town, an old paper, many founded many years ago. It was for sale. My parents helped me. We bought the paper. I became the publisher of this weekly newspaper. And I wanted to make it a great newspaper. So we were members of an organization called the National Newspaper Association. That's the association of all the weekly newspapers in America. And then, I mean, there used to be a lot of them. I probably still are. <clears throat> Not as many, I don't think, but the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of newspapers across the U.S., weekly newspapers. And they had a trade association. The head of this National Newspaper Association was a Jew named Walter Grunfeld. Walter Grunfeld was a brilliant person. He lived in Binghamton, New York. He had three newspapers himself, and we became friends. I mean, I used to love to listen to him speak. He, he was amazing. And so one day, I called him, Walter, you know, I want to make this a great paper, and um, can, we, can we come up and visit you sometime and learn, you know, spend the day with you and learn? No problem. We drove up to Binghamton, New York. And we spent the day with Walter. He taught us a lot. At the end of the day, it's time to go home. It was 6 o'clock at night. We get in the car. We, we go to his house. Before we left, we stopped at his house, a cup of coffee, 6.30. He wanted to 